Hello, and welcome to today's lesson, which will be on degrees of accuracy. Now, if you haven't already, or if it's something you think you need to go over, I strongly recommend you check out my videos on standard form and significant figures, particularly the significant figures one, as I will be taking a lot of that for granted during the course of this lesson. Anyway, what is a degree of accuracy? Well, we've seen, as you can see, I've got a number written down here, 437,000. And we've seen significant figures before. You would be reasonable in assuming this is accurate to three significant figures. Although it doesn't have to be, it could be accurate to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, basically. It can't be accurate to less than three significant figures because to two significant figures, this would be 440,000, as we've seen but it can be accurate to three plus significant figures. So it is, we'll assume it's accurate to three significant figures. So what is that in a degree of accuracy? How is a degree of accuracy different to a significant figure? Well, they're not that different. The degree of accuracy is just the relative place value of how accurate it is. So two significant figures is taking the first two important uh, digits. A degree of accuracy is taking the digits up to a certain point, similar to decimal points. So if you say something's accurate to two decimal places, that is a degree of accuracy. We'll see why later. So we're assuming this is accurate to three significant figures, no more. This means is if we uh, go for our lovely place value, we've got the units there, the tens, the hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, and the hundred thousandths. And this is accurate for the hundred thousands, for the ten thousands, for the thousands, but no further. So the degree of accuracy we would give this as that this is accurate to the nearest thousand. Okay, cool done degrees of accuracy. What does that actually mean? Well, if it's accurate to the nearest thousand, all that really means is that whatever the original number is, it rounds to 437,000. That's simple. You've done rounding before with significant figures. This is surprisingly easy. So, and I'll write this off and give you a go now. I would like you to tell me what 379462 is. Firstly, to two significant figures. So 2SF. Then to the nearest, uh, yeah, to the nearest thousand. And then, why not, to the nearest 10. So, pause the video if you need a bit more time. Answers are, so two significant figures we saw in my previous lesson, that's going to be 380,000. This is, of course, the same as to the nearest 10,000. To the nearest 1,000, uh, it's just going to be 379,000, the forward round down, and to the nearest 10, it's going to be 379,460. You probably wouldn't want to know to the nearest 10, but it's good to be able to practice with whatever they might give you. So, let's take this to the nearest thousand. We've got 379,000. I said at the end of my last lesson, I'd talk about upper and lower bounds. So I'll do that now. What is an upper bound and what is a lower bound? It's quite simple. It's what you think. An upper bound is the largest the original number could be. So if this number is accurate to the thousands, to the nearest thousand, what is the largest it could be? Similarly, the lower bound is what the smallest it could be is. And okay, so let's deal with lower bound first because it's easier. So what is the smallest number 
that would round to the nearest thousand to give 379,000. Well, we know that the 370,000 part of this won't be affected by the rounding at all. Uh, now, 9,000, the smallest thing that's going to round to 9,000 is going to be 8,500. It's going to be, obviously, 500 rounds up to 1,000, and you need to have 8,000 already there to push it to 9,000. So the lower bound, which we write as LB, is 378,500. Now the upper bound, what's the uh, largest number that would round down to 379,000? Now it's going to be 379 something, because anything larger than 379 would round to something larger. Uh, and you'd be correct in thinking that 379,499 is the largest integer that would round down. But hang on, I said integer, not number, integer. And we're interested in the largest number. Can I make this number any bigger and still round down to 379,000? The answer is, of course, yes. That's why I'm asking the question. We could stick a point 0.9 on the end. And then we could stick another 9, and another, and another, and another, and another ad infinitum. So what we say is that the upper bound is actually 379,500, despite the fact that obviously 379,500 itself would actually round up. For the sake of doing the maths, the actual number is so infinitesimally close to 379,500 that we might as well just say it is 379,500. That's genuinely all there is to it. So any number to any degree of accuracy, you just split half of whatever your degree of accuracy is either way. So if it was the nearest 10,000, you just add 5,000 and subtract 5,000 to get your upper and lower bounds respectively. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Let's take 480,000 to the nearest 10,000, find the upper and lower bound. And then once you've done that, uh, 672,800 upper and lower bounds, please. Again, do feel free to pause the video if you need a bit more time. Okay, answers. So upper bound of 480,000, we're assuming to the nearest 10,000 here. So we're going to split 10,000 in half, 5,000. So it's going to be plus 5,000 and minus 5,000. So the upper bound is going to be equal to 480,000 plus the 5,000, which is just 485,000. Similarly, the lower bound, 480,000 minus 5,000 is 475,000. Uh, for 672,800, we're assuming to the nearest 100 here. Uh, the upper bound is going to be, well, it's 100, half that is 50, so let's just add 50. So it's going to be 672,850. And the lower bound, to absolutely no one's surprise, is going to be 672,750. Cool. I will talk more on upper and lower bounds in my next lesson. Uh, I have one more thing I want for this lesson before I will shut up for another week, which is why degrees of accuracy actually matter and some of the traps we have to watch out for. Uh, if we have something like 480,000, and we know that's accurate to the ten, nearest 10,000, and we wanted to then add... 672,800 to that, which we know is accurate to the nearest 100, what do we do? We've got two numbers which are both accurate to different degrees. And in this situation, we are forced, we have to lose some of the information from the more accurate number, we have to take the least accurate number. And when I say the least accurate, I mean it's accurate to the largest number. So the 480,000 is accurate to the 
nearest 10,000 only rather than the 672,800 which is accurate to the nearest 100. See, because 100 is smaller than 10,000, that means that the 672,800 has a greater degree of accuracy, which you can clearly see from the fact that there are less zeros in it. So, if we're doing this addition, we treat everything, we, well, we take the 672,800 to the nearest 10,000, which in this case is 67, no, 670,000, so we ignore the 8 and the 2 because it rounds down. We then do the addition as you would normally expect. No, sorry, that's wrong. That's better. Uh, and you get 1,150,000 accurate to the nearest 10,000. Now, you may be a bit surprised. You could obviously do 672,800 plus 480,000. You just stick the uh, 2 and the 8 back in. No problem. But there's a really good reason we don't do this, and there's a nice little anecdote, which is that there's a uh, new security guard working at a museum, and they have a lovely big dinosaur skeleton in the museum, and a confused tourist walks up to the security guard, as you wouldn't normally approach a security guard to ask for information at the museum, but they do anyway, and the tourist asks the security guard, how old is that dinosaur statue? The security guard replies, it's 65 million years and two weeks old. Wow. How accurate? How do you know? Says the tourist. The security guard says, well, when I started working here, they told me it was 65 million years old, and I've been working here for two weeks. Doesn't make sense. That 65 million years old was clearly not accurate to the nearest week. 65 million years was accurate to the nearest probably million years in this situation. So obviously, million years and weeks are vastly different, but even at things that are a lot closer, like our 672,800 and our 480,000, because of the difference in information and the difference in accuracies, the different degrees of accuracy, we have to work to the lowest one. Lowest one, sorry, I said that really weirdly. This is for addition and subtraction. For multiplication and division, it's slightly different. That's when significant figures come in. If you're doing multiplication or division, you treat everything to the uh, same significant figures, obviously, as the uh, number with the least significant figures, because you can't suddenly decide that a number is more accurate than it is. Uh, so that's all for this lesson. As I said, my next lesson I will focus a lot more on upper and lower bounds and show how we do some calculations with upper and lower bounds. Uh, but until then, I uh, hope this was useful and I look forward to uh, next week.